about things going from a uh, higher energy or pressure uh, to a lower and finding that homeostasis, all of a sudden it hit me. Where people's drive comes from. What's up guys? So I was at Laguna Seca recently out for the Monterey Prehistorics and I had an epiphany about life. Seriously, watching Formula One cars. That sounds crazy, right? Has nothing to do with cars. Has to do with a person's drive. Individuals out there, we see some who seem super driven and others that are more content to live an easier and more peaceful life. So what is that? What is that drive? Why are those people different than another? Okay. That's what the epiphany is, and I hope you'll bear with me. So, uh, you know, it, there's every yutz in the world on LinkedIn that's in a corporate, shares things back, forth, the other, and like, what is it? But I finally figured it out. So here's my story. I was walking along with some uh, nice people, and uh, uh, a gentleman who I just met uh, came with a uh, fam young family he knows, uh, some parents, and this little six-year-old girl with them. And I was hanging out with another gentleman who had a couple of Formula One cars, and uh, this beautiful Tyrrell Cosworth DFB car uh, with the engine cover off. And, you know, you can see the DFB sitting there and the velocity stacks and the exhaust and all that. And it was beautiful. So anyway, um, I saw them, said hello, uh, met this young family and a little girl. And we walked over. Of course, it's loud and there's everything going on. And someone said to me that the little girl was interested in building things and engineering. And even though she's just a young kid, uh, had an interest in it. And uh, I was kind of standing there and I was looking at the Formula One car sitting about as close as this Indy car sitting to me. And uh, the little girl was like staring at the engine. And I don't even remember what I said or where, you know, how it went, but I started explaining it to her. And it was really neat because she got it. And it was the craziest, coolest thing like I got to be part of in the longest time because it was just, it was so, it was like so simple, so neat, because here's a Formula One car, you know, woo, engineering, and just, you know, my goofy self, and this uh, cute little girl, and her parents are there and all, but a kid who's six years old had this amazing attention span, and you could just see, as I explained to her, like what the velocity stacks were, and the air is going in here because it's being drawn into the engine, and here comes out the exhaust and explaining the velocity stacks are similar shape to musical instruments and what a throttle plate is and like lifting her up so she could see inside and how that's connected to the pedal. And it was so neat because over the next probably half hour, this little girl completely conceptually understood how a Formula One car works. From the aerodynamics of the undertray to the wings, to the brakes, to the calipers and the pistons and the hydraulic fluid and the nature of pistons being like a bicycle crankshaft and driving through the gearbox, like everything. She got it and you could just tell. And everybody around, including like the man who owned the car, got this and everybody was watching because it was just this neat moment. But where the epiphany started to come to me was when I explained to her the cooling system. So I showed her the radiator, I pointed it to her and we looked at the little passageways and the little fins and how the heat energy from the engine and the explosions in it get into the water. And it's, it pumps through here and that heat is in this aluminum. So as the air is coming through and going up through the radiator and out, you have a high heat and a lower heat. There's higher energy in the radiator and that energy, the heat energy transmits into the air and dissipates and goes out. As we know, um, high energy always tries to seek a low energy. The, the world and physics in the universe is basically trying to find homeostasis. So if you dump hot water into a pot of cold water, it's eventually going to become the same temperature. Does, does that make sense? It's always loud or pressure going to less. And the biggest misnomer out there, we always like to say suck, like the, the under tray sucks the car to the ground. That's not true. That's not how that works. That's just what all us adults wrongly say. What it actually is, there's a lower pressure underneath and a higher pressure above it, an atmosphere in a car, and it pushes it to the ground because the high pressure is trying to get down there and the car's in the way. So when I was explaining things to this little girl, I wanted to make sure that I explained it correctly of how physics is actually working, but at a level she could understand and not inflict her learning with the way adults talk. 
So that was just a little thing that, that, that hit me. So it was a really wonderful moment. The parents were really happy. Uh, and everybody was just happy to learn and be there. It was so cool, you know, that something could be an expensive Formula One car just got to be this neat teaching aid for this little girl. Anyway, uh, somebody started up a car, it was really loud, so I scrambled to get, like, the parents and this little girl earplugs and stuff, and um, they were really happy, but they, you know, went away, so it was somewhere quieter. And that was that, that was that moment. And then later, uh, Laguna Seca was with some friends, and uh, we went up to the corkscrew way at the top of the hill, and, you know, I was just watching, boom, 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 you know, all the DFE Formula One cars going through. And just blasting down the hill. And that moment, when I explained to that little girl about things going from a uh, higher energy or pressure uh, to a lower and finding that homeostasis, all of a sudden, it hit me. Where people's drive comes from. You see, we all look at it wrong. We all think there's something different about these people. You know, that there's something better that makes them work harder and, and whatnot. That, um, but the truth of the matter is, there isn't. The people that are more driven and more successful that just can't rest until they build, create, do, make, earn, versus somebody who's happier to have like an easier balance of life and they don't go after those things, it's like fish. And I'm going to bring this all together, I swear. <laughs> this sounds crazy. So, fish. For any fishermen out there, especially those who fish in a river, what's this... The, you can always find fish because they're all the same. They want to find that place in the river, in the current, or by obstacles or whatnot, that one, they, they don't have to do much work. All fish are the same. They're lazy. I mean, they just are. They, they want to be in a place where the fresh water is flowing by and then they can breathe and get oxygen and they got the temperature they want and everything like that, but also that they get a food supply coming by. And as a fisherman, if you know how to read the water and you can see the trees and you think of, you know, what, what these fish may be eating and everything and what they're looking for, you can always figure out where they are even if you can't see them just by looking at the water and whatnot because fish are lazy. Fish want to find the easiest, like, balanced life based upon their nature because fish don't have, like, all this human psychology going on. They're like, well, I want all my fish friends to know I swim harder or something, right? So a fish, in a way, is more like the simple people that want an easier life. And you, you can all decide what that is for you, but a basic life. So where do these super driven people come from? And where are like heroes and stuff? And this is the epiphany. So fish and energy, right? Or pressure, like with the cooling system of the Formula One car or like the under tray. Here's the deal. The people that succeed hugely don't do it because they just want to succeed. They do it because there's something inside of them, whether it's like difficult memories or time or their core values that are absolutely rock solid that can't be shaken, that it's easier for them to take on massively difficult tasks, risks, whatever it takes to be successful or create or earn or learn or explore. They have such a burning thing inside that to accomplish all those things is easier because it's harder for them to live without doing that. So even for the, the heroes and the highly successful people, they're just like the fish. But the, the thing is, there's something burning inside of them which effectively won't allow them to not. And they just can't relax. And it, if you look into it, even the notion of what a hero is, like a superhero is supposed to be this perfect being that just wants to help because they can. But, you know, I don't think people are that into that anymore. We don't relate. But what we seem to relate to more now is the flawed hero. And that's kind of a perfect example. So, like Batman, Bruce Wayne, his parents got gunned down right in front of him as a kid when they were just going to the theater and doing something nice and arty and sophisticated. And he's so entrenched in his town of Gotham and where he is, that's just burning that the best way for him to relax and homeos like that way is to go out and fight crime and do all that. Where a person that didn't have that would just like leave Gotham and you know deal with it and find a simpler life. You know, Captain Nemo, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, 
the guy was brilliant, of course, and he might have been, I don't know, studying at a university or something else wise. But if I'm not mistaken from that story, he got stuck into like um, slavery, something like that. And he escaped, but I think they killed like his wife and kids, similar kind of story. Um, and he wanted to change the world. He wanted to destroy that, that trade and all. So he found his way. And in that story, basically discovering and building nuclear energy in a submarine in the 1800s was easier for him and more relaxing than not. So I hope that makes sense. But the reason I think that people succeed at a core and go out and earn and do it more than everybody else is because there's something burning. And for them to go succeed, that is their homeostasis. That is them as a fish or a trout sitting in that one easy place just watching for the food to come by. That is the heat from the water from a Cosworth DFE engine going into a radiator. And when the cool air comes by, that heat energy whoo, disappoints, pates to where it's more relaxed. So that was my epiphany and it seems to hold true. So I would love to hear your thoughts. Maybe you think I'm crazy right now. <laughs> Either way, I hope you like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys next time.